Longview, Washington, voted one of America's prettiest towns, is home to Pacific Northwest Jewel, the Monticello Hotel. Built in 1923, this historic building is currently celebrating its 90th anniversary. But unlike cheese and good wine, some things do not get better with age. Oh my gosh. I'm Philip Loving Foss, and I'm the owner of the Monticello Hotel. I've wanted to own the hotel since I was eight years old. My mother worked here when I was very young, and I remember all the cocktail waitresses and how beautiful they were, and wanted to be a part of it. Some might say the story of how Philip Lovingfoss obtained the hotel is almost too good to be true. Others might call it a fairy tale. Philip was a bartender here. He fell in love with the owner, Annabelle Jewell. I was in my early 30s when Annabelle and I first started going together, and she was in her mid-60s. They were married, and when Annabelle passed away, all of her assets were given to Philip. He inherited the Monticello Hotel. It's all pretty. With his inheritance, Philip has been living the good life with his girlfriend and general manager, Ginger, who is also 30 years his senior. DJ. But despite the owner's fabulous wealth, the staff are underpaid. I still make minimum wage, and I've been here 12 years. Yay, we're getting into the car. Yeah. Philip flaunts his wealth in front of us. Don't flaunt it in our face when we're all wondering, do we put gas in the car or do we buy groceries? This is fucking unreal. He's probably got $150,000 worth of diamonds on his right arm, 10 karat diamond ring on his left finger. He walked through the kitchen one day and, and somebody broke a glass and he said, oh, do I lose a stone? I mean, really? How fucking arrogant. I want to say fuck you. <laughs> While Philip and Ginger have been enjoying their wealth, the hotel has been terribly neglected. Sarah Burns. Oh my gosh. Seriously? That is so gross. I'll go all the way down the hall around the corner. Inside the beautiful historic Monticello Hotel, there are only four suites, and then there are countless rooms stuffed with Philip and Ginger's crap instead of guests. With only four guest bedrooms available in the main hotel, most guests are unwittingly given rooms in the so-called North Wing, which is a characterless 1960s shoebox motel next door. I was hoping to stay in the hotel. I don't really even feel like staying here now. And having been ignored for years, the hotel is not generating any new business with a rapidly dwindling client base. Where's Mary? She's not here with us. This once glamorous hotel has major problems. But Philip's problem may be the biggest. It is no big secret that Philip drinks. Philip will come in here drunk. Good job, good job. In front of all the staff, and it's just an embarrassing mess. <laughs> and I think that Philip could die. If he doesn't stop drinking. It scares me. The day before I arrived in Longview, things reached crisis point. I was pulled over, and they charged me with a DUI. I was uh, placed under arrest. They booked me in the Calix County Jail, and yesterday morning I was released. It's an unfortunate situation. Thank you. You guys have a good night. You too. This hotel, its staff, and the community deserve better. Phil talked about closing it. If Gordon isn't able to save this place for us, um, 50 people will be out of jobs, and Phil will be on his yacht in Seattle drunk. Hey, NASA! This place is a gem that needs to be preserved. It's the heart of Longview. This town needs the Monticello. Gorgeous. That place is massive. And look at all those rooms for guests. Finally, somewhere nice to stay. I feel sorry for the crappy motel next door. I'm amazed that place is still open, right next to a big hotel like that. My god. Wow, look at those beautiful cars. There must be a car show on. Oh, no. Is somebody having a laugh? Hotel hell. Laddie's nine. Who the fuck can't spell? Part-time housekeeper. I can't think of anything worse to advertise on the outside of your hotel. Morning. Good morning. And first name is? Vanessa. Vanessa, yeah. nice to see you. I'm nice. Gordon. I see you're having a classic car show today. No, those all belong to our owner, Philip. No, stop. They do. They belong to the owner? Yes, they do. What's with the plate? There's like hotel hell on one of the plates. Yes. But you did that for me? I'm not sure if you did it for you or for him. Wow. Uh, Jeff Daggy, Employer of the Month, 2010. You know, it's 
2013. I do, yes. Are the staff that bad that hasn't been <laughs> a more recent employee of the month? Last I heard, actually, he was in jail. <laughs> Holy crap. We have so many great employees. It's ridiculous that we're not recognized more than we are. Here's your card, Thank and you. here is your room code. You're in room 220. Uh, will you show me the way, or...? Oh, sure, if you'd like. Shall we? Please. If you'll follow me. I've got that. We're going outside. Yes. OK. Just across here. So you have to go out to get back up again? Yes. And 220 right here. Um, but this is not the hotel. This is our North Wing Motel. And why in the fuck would I want to stay in there? All we have available to rent in the hotel are four suites. I'd rather stay in there next door okay. than in this dump. I'm sorry. People want to stay in the hotel. They don't want to stay in the cracker box. Driving up here, I didn't expect to be put in a motel. No, I understand, and I'm, I am sorry. All right, it's just right over here. Thank you. You're welcome. Bloody hell. That sofa's hideous. Who would use a fucking brown sofa like that? Oh, my God, it gets worse in here. This bed, is this empty? Uh, no. The rooms are furnished completely with stuff from Philip and Ginger's home. Oh, dear. Is a mattress from their house? Yes. You bring a mattress from your house into your hotel? I wouldn't. They charge $250 a night for that mattress. I don't even know what to say about it. When they get new stuff, they bring old stuff here. There's some storage rooms that are full of old furniture. Where are the storage places? Where Just is down it? the hall. Jeez. It's like a suite just yeah. full of crap. It's like a dumping ground. There's more, too. Wow, you are kidding me. I'm not. Oh, my God. Look at this. I wish this I was insane. kidding you. It's like a hoarder. It's just junk everywhere. I don't understand a hotel owner that would dump half their shit in hotel rooms and not rent them out. Gordon was pretty appalled at the state of the storage rooms, how much crap there was in there. It's just a big fucking waste. Okay. I appreciate it. You're very welcome. Thank you. Wow, this place is so disappointing. The biggest highlight so far is the drive up. The minute you step inside, it's just bizarre. I can't wait to meet the owner and find out what the hell is going on in his head. I've just arrived at the Monticello Hotel in Longview, Washington, and I'm shocked to discover that there are only four rooms for guests in this grand place, while others are being used for storage. Oh, my God. It's like a hoarder. It's just junk everywhere. I've got to meet the owner and the general manager and figure out what else is wrong with this place. Oh, of course. Nice to see you. Very nice to see you. Um, Welcome to the Monticello Hotel. Thank you. What a gorgeous place from the outside. Good. Thank you. How are you? Good. So you're Ginger? Yes, this is my significant other. Hello. There you go. Is that true? It's true. Wow. Look at that bling. Can I have a quick look? It looks like a Super Bowl ring. Mm. <laughs> Too heavy for me. <laughs> um, I thought there was a car fair here. So someone told me they're yours. They're mine. Amazing. Let's go to the lounge. Did you always want to own a hotel? Ever since I was a little kid, I wanted to own this hotel. Serious? And what's the building worth now? I mean, probably three and five million. It's extraordinary. I inherited it. All the estate? Yes. And if you don't mind me asking, what was that the tune of? Ten million. Wow. Is the hotel making money or losing money? It's losing money. I've been carrying it. How much are you losing? Uh, Thirty to thirty-five thousand a month. Oof. Lose it. This last. So four hundred grand a year. Mm. Yes. That's insane. There's lots of sleepless nights for me. How are we losing so much money? We didn't take advantage of. I know that. Who's taking advantage? The kitchen staff for sure. They wait and bleed the clock. To think you're going to get paid for hours that you're not working? They can't do that to you. I know. I think Gordon's going to have difficulties with my employees. I don't see them as team players at all. If this place was taken away, what would it mean to you? Devastating. No, it would be equivalent to a death. Oh, jeez. I started here in 1973. This has been a huge part of my life. Wow. Well, that's giving me an insight, let me tell you. Um, Ginger, nice to see you, darling. Very nice. Likewise, thank, thank you. Thank you, thank you. Excellent. Gordon, welcome again. Uh, thank you so much. It's terrible to hear that Philip and Ginger are being taken advantage of by their staff when they clearly care so much. I really hope I can help them sort their employers out. Oh, hello. Good evening. How are you? I'm fine. I'm Debbie. Debbie Gordon, nice to see you. I have a table for you right over here. Now, how long have you been here? I have been here 12 years. Wow, seriously, 12 years? Yes. Um, uh, right, what would you recommend? I recommend our crab and artichoke dip. OK, let's get for one of those. All right. Philips Triple Tower. Yes. What's that? 
It's a three-tiered tower of three different appetizers. And is his name big enough on the menu there? Obviously suffering from small man syndrome. Let's go for that. And then the butternut ravioli. Let's try that. All right. Thanks, Debbie. Nice to see you. So the appetizers first, please. Okay. Well, I'm feeling really nervous about cooking for Gordon. They're all fucking froze together. Most of the food is prepackaged or canned or frozen because Ginger and Philip are running this place like real misers. They uh, pinch a, a penny on every corner. This is our crab and artichoke dip. It's served with deep fried pita bread. And um, is it fresh crab or canned? Frozen Chilean crab. Frozen Chilean crab. Correct. Jesus Christ. Fucking snot dip. I mean, it's like a dish ready for one of Philip's girlfriends. No teeth. Oh, God. It's got a sour taste to it. I don't know what it is. No, Jesus. Thanks, darling. You're welcome. Ah. He felt it tasted sour. It always got that taste to me. I don't like it. You are kidding me. This is the tower? Tea. This is the tower. This is the tower. Oh, my God. Holy mackerel. So, yeah. No, but it's like something you should have in your fucking garden, not in your restaurant. Are they shrimp? Are they fresh or are they frozen? They're frozen. They're frozen. Damn. Mm. It's fucking disgusting. And what's in here? They're teriyaki beef tips. Jesus. That sauce is hideous. And that's just tough. Beef tips. It's like beef chew. And that middle one's another portion of snot dip. I skip that. Well, unfortunately for the chef, he doesn't get to dictate his own menu. What? The chef doesn't write his own menu? He does not. Let's move on, shall we? My God, careful. So Philip's dictating the menu. I suppose if his staff can't be trusted to clock in and out, they can't be trusted to choose the food. Feedback on that? Um, the meat is too tough. The sauce tastes weird. He can tell it's not homemade. Is this Ramsay's? And it is. The meat is too tough. Yeah. He's getting a full picture, and that's just what I wanted. Right. Feel very good about it. I am very disappointed with Dan's food. It's horrible. I just hope that Gordon sees the problems with the staff. Ravioli. I'm dreading bringing this dish out to him right now, the butternut ravioli. Thank you. Who made the uh, raviolis? I don't know the name of the manufacturer. Manufacture? Correct. So the raviolis aren't even made either? They are not made here. Oh, Jesus. They're packaged. That's dreadful. Like a mouthful of sugar every time. Oh, dear. Thank you, Diane. Wow. Frozen crab, frozen shrimp, pre-packaged ravioli. It's more like eating a badly run old folks home than a decent restaurant. Obviously from a package. <laughs> we all knew that one was coming. I think there's a better way that our kitchen can function than it's functioning right now. I see just blatant neglect. Um, tell me about Philip's management style. Well, when he's sober, I get along with him just fine. When he's drinking, I avoid him at all costs. Does he drink a lot on he site? Does. Oh, he well. does. On a scale of 1 to 10, how bad is he drinking now? A 10. A 10. This week, he was arrested. For what? DUI. You are fucking kidding me. I'm not kidding. <laughs> oh, my God. I want to see the hotel owner jailed. Jailed? He was he... kept overnight in jail. Bloody hell. Why would he not tell me that when it just happened hours ago? Phillip's in denial. He doesn't take responsibility for his drinking problem. And I felt Gordon needed to know. Starting to come out. Um, why don't you ask the chef to come out of the dining room? I'd Sorry. like to meet him and bring Philip and uh, Ginger as well. Thank you. He would like to see you all in the dining room. <sighs> I'm, I'm lost for words. Mm -hmm. Chef, that was dreadful. I don't think anything was fresh. It takes extra time to do things homemade. Uh, yeah, naturally. We're on a time restraint. What? Ask how many hours they get in a week or whatever, and they got to scrape for out. My, my prep cook gets 20 hours a week. That's not enough time to make fresh food. Is that why all the food's frozen? I mean, I get cut carrots or cut celery in the bag. I get 
the boiled eggs in a bag, done, peeled. You buy in boiled eggs? Yes. I played the safe card and purchased most of it prepared. You played the safe card? We can't even boil a fucking egg in here. Philip, if you care about quality, you need to pay people to prep fresh food, not buy it in. There were times uh, through January, February, where I'd have 12, 16 hours a week. A week? Yeah. How do you survive? Three hours a day? Not very well, but Do we you have a family? It. Yes, I do. Dan? Seven kids. This is insane. You can't run this hotel like a miser. If I sold fucking three of those cars and put it into the kitchen budget to function for the next 12 months, the chefs can do their job. And speaking of cars, why don't you tell me about this? I'm at the Monticello Hotel in Longview, Washington. Oh, my God, the Monticello Hotel owner jailed. Jailed? And I've just discovered that the hotel owner has a drinking problem so bad that just one day before I arrived, he was arrested for drunk driving. Can I have a word with the owner? Sure. Please? Yes. What is going on? Truthfully? I don't know, Gordon. Have you had a drink today? No. Yes, you have. Your staff tell me that you have a drinking problem. No. And yet you've just been busted for DUI. Ginger, does your boyfriend have a drinking problem? He does like his libations. I'm pissed off that you couldn't even say, hey, Gordon, can I have a word? Gordon, I, I fully intended on having a conversation You're splashed with you. all over the newspaper. I'm aware of that. Who owns this place? Me. So when are you going to step up? I'm here, Gordon. I'm engaged. If you can't be honest with yourself, you're fucked. The facts are starting to become clear. The problem here isn't the staff, it's the owner. Do you have um, room service? We do not. No room service in a hotel this size. That's not the only unpleasant surprise. Guests check in, and just like me, they think they're going to get a room in a historic gem. But instead, they're placed in the motel. This is disgusting. I don't think I can shower in this. I wonder if we can ask for a different room. This is awful. And Fettuccine Alfredo's ready. And during dinner service, most of the guests are over the age of 70. There clearly hasn't been any buzz about this place in decades. Yes, sir. That's not a prime room. Should be a little moist during that, shouldn't it? Well, I can go and I can go and check and see if there's another end cut back there. Dan? Yeah. Do we have another end cut? A moist one? Please be juicy. It is. Okay. Is Flint, will you do this? No. No. Why all of a sudden is he involved? Because I'm here. I'm sorry. Strawberry daiquiri? I can't believe Philip is put on a show for me. Are you? Well, if you want to know the truth about a drinker, ask the bartender. Grant, that's what is going on tonight. It's like a comedy of errors here. You're welcome. Does Philip normally eat tonight? No. No. What does Philip normally do at the hotel? He does drink quite a bit. Wow. And on average, a day, how many drinks would you make a day? During the day, sometimes four or five, and then it jumps into the evening. It could come up to uh, seven, eight. Jesus. I had him cut off of a new one. Oh, wow. Wow. No wonder things are on the slide with Philip drinking that much. I've got to get him to tell me the truth. This monstrous hotel has been running rudderless. There's no one at the helm. And you're pretending all of a sudden I'm busy, I'm making I'm lifting, because I'm here. I, I, I just... No, it's you not because you're here. We don't normally do this stuff. This is what I normally do. You're calling your staff liars? I would say so. If they say that I'm not out here helping them every time I walk in this building, I would call them fucking liars. Come on. Be fucking honest with me. I am. Do you think I can just wave a fucking magic wand? No. When the place is running to the ground? With dinner service over, what do you say? I'm going to get Philip and his staff together so I can finally get to the truth. Is that normal, what I witnessed tonight? Is Philip always here? No. Does Philip always expedite the fucking hot plate? No. No. We need somebody to expedite. We're understaffed, and if we get busy, then we can't give good service, and those people will not come back. A person can't shortcut like no. that. No, because... the size of this place. The business has been strangled. Yeah. It's been strangled by the owner. 
Why are we pretending? I'm doing a good job of pretending then. This is what I do. Every time that you come in here, this is what you do. I do not run food down to your bar. For the last couple of nights? Let's talk about the elephant in the room, shall we? When Philip's drinking, he behaves one or two different ways. Mm -hmm. Either he's jovial and likes to giggle and have a good time, or if finances are in arrears, we hear about how much everything costs you and you were gonna close the doors. It's stressful. It, it's not easy to come to work with someone threatening us all the time that the doors are gonna be closed. Please don't look at me like that, Philip, because you do do this to us. That's bullshit. You Philip, need to hear the truth. You have told us over and over and over again that you're just gonna shut I may the have, I may have said that twice. Twice, but to come in here true. regularly and say That's I'm going to close true. the doors. If we keep lying about shit and we keep covering up shit and whatever, then he ain't going to fucking help us. And here we go like this, like we've been going for seven fucking years. He's He's been known to walk behind the bar and fix himself drinks after the staff cuts him off. Philip? Yes. Is that true? That I don't know about. That I don't know about. I've gone behind the bar and made my own drinks, yes. So you're blacked out, you're that inebriated that you've got no fucking idea that you're that far gone? If he goes behind the bar, take the drink away from him, he cannot go Why back there. Why is he in there in the first place? Work. Why is he even in that bar in the first place? Why does Why is he have to Why? do that? To me, it's hypocritical. You put out memos saying that we can't drink in the bar. It's hypocritical, Philip, and we care about this place and we care about you. But a lot of us feel like you don't give a damn about us. Why are you coming in here to put your, your employees in a bad, uncomfortable situation? If it was up to me, I'd say, Philip, you can't drink in here. Because if something happens to you take out a family of four, they're coming after me and my family. And I don't have any money to, to afford a lawyer to keep me out of jail for the rest of my life. I'm at the Monticello Hotel in Longview, Washington, where the staff are confronting the owner about his drinking problem. If it was up to me, I'd say, Philip, you can't drink in here. Because if something happens to you take out a family of four, they're coming after me and my family. And I don't have any money to, to afford a lawyer to keep me out of jail for the rest of my life. They are telling you the truth because they freaking care. Unfortunately, you're not telling the truth. And that's why this business is struggling. This ship is on a collision course. Can I show you something I think you should all see? Come with me. I think everybody's forgotten what it's like for guests to stay in this hotel. Dan, April. How much is this room? $250 a night, Friday and Saturday is $180 the rest of the week. Let me show you what $250 gets you at the Monticello. Let me turn the lights out. You see that? This black light shows up bodily fluids. That's, That's exactly disgusting. what you're seeing. I wouldn't want to lay on that bed. Where do these mattresses come from, Philip? The house in Arizona. Your house? Yes. Wow. Those two holes there? That's cigarette holes. Uh-oh. Burns. Watch out. It's everywhere. No? Don't touch there. Oh, jeez. I was totally grossed out when I seen that bed. It was sickening. $250 to sleep in Phil. Oh, my God. But it's semen right there. It is everywhere. <laughs> Does that make anybody else feel sick? Yes. Yeah. Because right now, I am fucking disgusted by this foul, polluted bed. I felt dirty. I'm a clean person. It was disgusting. I don't know why you're running a hotel. You're just ripping people off. You don't care for the customers. And you don't care for your staff. Who do you care for? I care about my staff. The first thing you said to me when I arrived here, Philip, what's the problem? Staff. They're bleeding the cloth. Huh. No way. That's what you told me. I've got half it written down at home where I put at least 100 hours free in here. We will come in an hour, two hours early, not punch in, and then we will work late to get what we need to get done. You have an estate to the tune of 10 fucking million dollars and a chef that puts 100 hours in for nothing. Or is he lying? He's not lying. He's here no, all the not. time. I'm surprised you guys are here. I'm the only earner for my family, and I make 500 bucks every two weeks. This is fucking crazy. And you rock up here with a plate with hotel help. What the fuck is going on? 
These guys are your bread and butter, your fucking backbone. But they're terrified to tell you the truth. You can't keep on cutting corners and humiliating them because they're the problem, the fact that it's not busy. Look within. It starts from the fucking top. Amen. Yeah. Could you just excuse me for leaving here on my own with Philip? Thank you. Now, can you fuck your man up? I don't have all the answers, Gordon. I'm trying. Give me one fucking answer. Give me something. You're abusing your staff. What kind of message does it send to them when you fill the car park with classic cars and they're fucking struggling? Do you think it's fair? Do I think it's fair? No. No. Do they deserve better? Of course. Why are you doing it? I don't have an answer for that. I don't know why I'm doing that. Get out, Philip. Leave me alone. Get the fuck out of here. That was rough. Sleeping in a tub is bloody uncomfortable, but it certainly beats sleeping on that filthy mattress. The staff have been as honest as they can be, but they're all afraid of losing their jobs. Both of you, come with me, please. It's time Philip and Ginger heard from the people who aren't afraid to tell them the truth. Hey, good morning, everybody. Morning. 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 Thank you so much for coming. Your guests are going to give you some honest feedback. That room was dirty. It looked like an animal was killed and drug out the room. Oh, I mean, the stain goes down the hall. There's no thought to the guest experience at all. Wow. You feel like you threw your money down the drain. I was so disappointed to know that I couldn't stay in a piece of history and got sent over to a motel. I was shocked at the decor that I saw. It was just hideous. It was brutal to hear that many guests complain about a one-night experience in the hotel. It actually scares you away when you see the marquee that says Thursday Laddie's Night and hiring part-time housekeeper. You don't want to advertise that you're short on housekeeping. Whose stupid idea was it to advertise for a part-time housekeeper? Well, I guess it's my idea. I'll take the responsibility well, of that. Thank you. Can I ask you one question? Would you come back and stay here? Please raise your hands. No. Never. Never. I appreciate your honesty. Thank, thank you. Thanks. Thanks. You heard what the guests had to say. Yeah, I did. Do me a favor. Spend a couple of minutes here looking at what you've inherited and ask yourself, do you really want it enough? Do you really care enough? Yes, I do care. I don't think you do. Owner Philip and general manager Ginger have just found out what the guests really think about the Monticello Hotel. Would you come back and stay here? No. Never. I think Ginger has finally realized how much Philip's drinking is hurting the hotel. And now she's asked to speak to me alone. It's been hard because it's deep. Well, His alcoholism is very deep. I can see it's been hard. And I've reached out to my children, and they've all talked to him. But it hasn't been any good. And it's getting worse. The stress yep. on my end has been, where's he at? Is he driving? Is he going to kill somebody? Is he going to kill himself? I just wish you'd told me the truth, that's all. I am a private person, and this has been very hard. And it's hard to see someone destroy themselves. I don't even think he realizes how bad it is. It's been a very heavy burden on me. He's very ill. It's a terrible disease. He's an ill man, and you're suffering the consequences. He needs help. And that's the truth. I'm going to persuade him to get treatment. Oh God, would you do that for me? I will do that. I want this place to work. OK? Thank you. And I'm sorry. I'm going to need the staff's help to get through to Philip. Come through, guys. Maybe together we can break through his denial. I'm going to get Philip in now. And I need you to get behind agreeing that he needs help. Now, it's hard, but you're part of this change. And you stand up for what you feel is right. 
The staff needs him to show us that he's willing to make a change. I think he needs to become honest with himself. This hotel is at breaking point, and you need help. Is there anyone else in this room that thinks that Philip needs help with his addiction? Please raise your hand. They are all here because each and every one of them care, not just about the hotel, but about you. Ginger, you know how bad the drinking problem is. Yes, I do. <clears throat> I pour out bottles. I empty them out down the sink because I love him and I hate to see him destroy himself. And that's what it's been like. It's been very hard. If you could see it through our eyes, it's like night and day. During the day, you just, you're amazing, Philip. You talk to us with so much respect and stuff like that. And as soon as you start drinking, you can see that huge difference come over you. It's like a black cloud. We really care about you, Philip. I mean, we're afraid for you because your rock bottom isn't going to be like most because you have the money to pay way out. You have the money to do what you do. Your rock bottom is going to be very serious. It's either going to kill you or kill somebody else. I don't want to see you die, and I don't want to see you in trouble and hurt somebody. You're very important. You're worth getting clean. You're so worth it. OK. Philip, will you get help? You cannot keep on hiding this. I don't know what you want me to say, Gordon. What about what you want to say? I'm not saying anything. We're done. If the entire staff can't get through to Philip, maybe speaking to Malone will help change his mind. He's got to get help, otherwise this place doesn't stand a chance. When are you going to snap inside and say, fuck? I'm hitting rock bottom. I've been in this position for the past several years. I'm sorry to hear that. Don't get upset. Huh? Don't get upset. It's all part of it. So what do you want to do, Philip? Are you ready to get help? Please. I promise you, I'm definitely going. For my family, for my staff, I'm going into treatment. Appreciate that. Come here. It's time. Some things in life are more important than business, and I'm glad Philip has realized he has to put his health first and sort out his problems. Coming up, welcome to the new and improved Monticello Hotel. Oh. Change is in the air at the Monticello Hotel, so overnight, my design team gave the hotel the makeover it truly deserves. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to the new and improved Monticello Hotel. Before we go inside, I want you to notice something. That dreadful motel sign has disappeared. <laughs> when people want to make a booking, you can offer them a choice of the modern annex or the historic hotel. And that will be a lot easier because I've opened up four new suites for guests, wow. doubling the number of rooms in this historic hotel. Oh, oh yes. <laughs> Let's go, guys. Let's Come do in. it. Woo! I have butterflies. I am so excited to walk in that hotel. Come on, jump in, ladies. Oh, 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 Welcome oh, to your new suite. Oh, Isn't it beautiful? Wow. I love it. Oh, my God. This is a beautiful room. It should be used for guests, not storage. Never in my wildest dreams did I think our storage unit could end up looking like this. Are you ready to see the bedroom? That's so cool. I don't, I don't have words. Gone is all that second-hand furniture replaced by a comfortable bed with luxurious linens. Now we have something to be proud of. I mean, the place is absolutely gorgeous. Stunning new furniture. Beautiful linens and beds for all your suites. Very classy. It's mind-blowing. What Gordon has done is just phenomenal. What do you think? I think that this is a room that I can be proud to send my guests to. Oh, my goodness me. Wonderful. They're never going to want to leave. No. <laughs> no. I'd like to show you my room. Oh. Oh, 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 oh. oh, oh. oh this is amazing. For me, the stunning interior it's matches beautiful. the majestic exterior. Now, you look on the outside, you think this is exactly the kind of feel you want inside. Have oh, a quick look at the bedroom. The this one you're going to love. Oh, boy. <laughs> oh. oh. And the bed. As you know, with the mattress full of stains. Now, look, that beautiful bed. That's what you call a proper king-size bed. 
Oh, wow. It was our best room before, and now it's the best room in town. <laughs> it's beautiful. Come through, guys. The potential here is phenomenal. It's the heart of the town again. And something to be proud of. Oh, excuse me. Welcome to Monticello. Stunning oh. new room service. Oh. Oh. oh, wow. How can a hotel of this standard not have a small dynamic room service menu? It increases the turnover on average check, but more importantly, guests stay actually longer if they know the food's that good in the room as well. Now, get yourselves a plate and start tasting. Oh, wow. This is so good. Mm. Those are rotten potatoes. I know. Yeah. There's nothing like fresh salmon. That food was amazing. I can't recall the last time I tasted food so fresh. I think it's going to be a real bonus. Enjoy the rest of the food. We've got a big, big night ahead of us. It's a really nice menu. I think it's going to bring the revenue higher. This is exactly, exactly what we needed. This is sensational. Mm -hmm. Beyond. Beyond. It's not just room service. I reinvented the menu for the restaurant too, using the best local ingredients. I'm confident the combination of great food and great rooms will encourage a whole new generation to come here. That's getting medium in there. It needs about another minute or two, then we'll pump that one out, okay? The difference between the frozen and the food we're getting now, night and day. There is, it's indescribable for the taste, the presentation. It's awesome. Keep cooking with fresh ingredients. I will, okay. And remember this. The day a kitchen can't be bothered to boil a fucking egg, yeah? Get out of there. OK, you're better than that. Yes, sir. Good job. Thank you. Yeah, well done. Thank you. Are you checking in? Yes. Yeah. Oh, can I get your name? Uh, Sorrel. Ah, oh, you're staying in one of our new suites. I can't wait for people to see these rooms. Oh, wow. And I'm ecstatic. I'm going to have to send so many less guests out to the motel. This is what I had hoped for. Although the guests are delighted with the changes, it looks like Chef Dan has a problem. Quick word. What's wrong? Oh, no, you're leaving. The Monticello's relaunch is going brilliantly. Nice to see you. Gordon. You OK? Yeah. But Chef What's Dan wrong? has just pulled me aside. No, let's go here. Take a seat. What's the matter? Nine years clean this over. Wow, that's phenomenal. Well done. So I would love to be a sponsor, Philip's sponsor. If he would have me be a sponsor once he gets out, and he's going to need somebody by his side. That's an amazing commitment. Mm -hmm. It's a real big responsibility to be a Phil's sponsor, but it's one I'm, I'm willing to take on, get our owner on the right track. Yeah, good job. Thank you. It's going to be a challenging journey for Philip, but with all the support he has from Ginger and his staff, I'm hoping he'll be able to stay away from alcohol. So, mm -hmm. when you get out of treatment, you're going to need a sponsor. Somebody take your meetings. So nine years, clean us over. If you want, I offer. Thank you, Dan. All right. I appreciate that. Sound good? It does. Now with new life breathed into the Monticello, it's time for me to go. Both of you, take care of yourselves. OK? Good luck. Thank you, sir. Uh, good luck. Oh, dear. Next time I see you, give me a change, man. Oh, yes, I will. One more thing before I go. Thank you. What makes this place? Very special. It's not just it's a historic building in its 90th year. For me, it's the staff. So, just so you don't forget it, here we are. A new plaque. Wonderful. And the employers of the month this month are the entire staff. And you need to do more than just recognize how good they are. You need to pay them properly. Yep. Ramsey did a wonderful job. The hotel is flowing in the right direction because I do have a good crew to turn the ship back around and make it thrive. And I'm going to seek help for my drinking. Thank, Thank you, you, Gordon. Wow, what a place. I really hope Philip keeps his promises. Time will tell. Since my visit to the Monticello Hotel, bookings have gone up. This is really nice. <laughs> Yeah. And with all the new revenue coming in, the staff are working with a new sense of enthusiasm because Philip is finally paying them properly for all the hours they've put in. Gordon, I want to thank you for what you did. You saved 50 people's jobs and their livelihoods and their families. And Philip is booked into a treatment program which starts next week. All I can say for Gordon is God bless you and thank you. The Applegate River Lodge is located in beautiful Applegate, Oregon.
The lodge is nestled amongst gorgeous rivers, lush vineyards, and boasts some of the northwest's most stunning views. Owners Joanna and Richard Davis built the lodge 22 years ago. Richard actually designed the, the lodge and built it. Having that much workload of stress is just unbearable. Once this labor of love was completed, Richard decided it was time to take a break and relax. For 20 years, the couple got divorced, so Richard now lives on site in a hut next to the main lodge. My given name was Richard, but at this stage of my life, I just go by Papa. The Applegate River Lodge, it's been a way of life here for my family for about 22 years. Right now, my duties are making sure that the energy that was given to me to steward is here on the property at all times. And yeah, it's pop. <sighs> Let me grab my guitar. Let's see, where is my guitar? While Richard is looking for his guitar, back on Earth, his ex-wife Joanna is desperately looking for the money to keep the lodge's doors open. We could easily lose anywhere from five to fifteen thousand dollars a month just because of lack of business. What's going on? Let's see, we got any reservations coming up? What are you doing? I'm just screwing her off. I actually live in my motorhome. I rented my house out. Did you need something? No, I'm just hanging out. I don't see the Applegate River Lodge as a business. Never have, never will. All the pressure of running the lodge falls on Joanna's shoulders. She had high hopes her two sons, Duke and Dusty, would take charge of the business. I just totally fucking disagree with what you're doing. Door Should be none of your the concern. There's a big window. You don't have anything there. to do with this goddamn restaurant. But their constant fighting has gotten in the way. My brother and I have a rocky relationship and uh, led to fist fights and all sorts of arguments. The brothers refuse to work together, so Dusty runs the restaurant and bar as a separate business. I'll, I'll grab you a menu and we can get you something else. With his girlfriend and head chef, Cammy. Way too much olive oil on him, they turn him back. While Duke and his wife, Melissa, use the hotel's lobby as a concert venue, organizing regular music nights. How's everybody feeling tonight? <laughs> Dusty's a lot more into deadlines and numbers, and I'm a lot more into feelings and ideas and concepts. A lot of people say there's too much hot smoke and too much music, too much of this and too much of that, too much fun. That's not my take on it. And if that's not enough of a headache for guests trying to sleep, Richard holds after hours jam sessions. What time is it? What, 111. I have had to comp some rooms here at the lodge if it was too noisy for them or they didn't think the room was clean enough. Ew, there's spider webs all over it. Ugh. Ugh. It's so gross. I've had to comp quite a few rooms. Unsurprisingly, the inn is hemorrhaging money, dragged down by a co-owner who doesn't treat the lodge as a business and two fighting sons. If I can't get this family working together, their business is doomed. This lodge is my life. It's a legacy to carry on through generations. But the family is so dysfunctional that Gordon's just going to say, you know what, I can't fix you guys. We have to save the business. We have to save our family. I think Gordon's our only hope. My first time in Oregon, beautiful countryside. I'm on my way to the Applegate River Lodge. Now, if they've got a lodge here and they're not making a fortune, they must be doing something seriously wrong. That is beautiful. My goodness me. What's that dump? And what's that smell? <laughs> Are you ready to go back to sleep, Troop? Ghastly. Wow. Hello? It is huge. But it's so empty. Where's all the furniture? And where is everybody? Am I too late? Wow. Press the button for the buzz to summon a human with answers. You are kidding me. Just relax. I gotta do exactly what I'm doing. Hello? It's like this place hasn't been finished off inside. Hello? 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 Where are the guests supposed to sit? Hey, hey, 
hello. What are you doing? How, how, <laughs> I, think good. I, I, I thought you'd gone. No, I was uh, just hanging out. Uh, sorry, I didn't catch your first name. Richard. Richard. But around here, they kind of call me Paw Butt. Paw Butt. Paw Butt. Paw Butt. We're just buttlings, all of us are running around here. <laughs> Do you normally run front desk? This bell is to my room. OK. And then when music starts coming, I turn it over. Music? The music program we're going to do tonight. Uh, so there's a music, there's a band playing tonight? Yes. And then we'll probably jam out later okay. in, in the butt hut. What, what is the butt hut? Just help me. Would understand. you like to see the butt hut? <laughs> uh, I'd love to see the butt hut. <laughs> okay. Yeah, lovely. this is where you run the reception from, the butt hut. <laughs> yeah. Wow. This is, is the butt hut. This is where me and Troopy hang out. <coughs> Troopy, get up. Smell. What is that smell? Uh, incense. Them? They're right here. Incense. Yes. That is a yes. strong fucking incense. Yeah. Right? <laughs> Jesus. Yeah. But that doesn't smell like the smell I've just smelled. Yeah, it's herbs. It's a medicinal herb. I love herbs, especially the freshness of them. You can use it for cooking if you want to do a really nice fettuccine. Okay. Was it like uh, a basil? This is, yeah, it's like a basil. Wow. It has a nice smell to it. Fuck me. That's definitely not basil. Is this cannabis? Yes. So we smoke pot. Poof, that's what I could smell the minute I came in here. Yeah. What do you want me to do? Is this legal here? Yes. I use uh, medicinal herb. Before you put your hands back in that cookie jar, do you mind if I see my room? It's uh, getting a bit late. Oh, oh. Uh, I'm not. I'm, not I'm, I'm done for a while. Oh, OK, you're done yeah, for a while. Yeah, I'm medicated. Okay. Like, you know, so you... how do I get to the room? I'll show you. This is a first. The owner of this lodge is as high as a kite. Wow, look at this place. He probably hasn't even noticed the place has no furniture. This is the cattleman room. Cattleman yeah. room, thank you. Yeah. It smells like cattle in here. Wow. What happened to the carpet? Did the dog have an accident? You know, we party a lot here, so you're going to have liquor. Who knows what's on these carpets, right? What's that? That's just bugs. A oh, bugs? Bloody hell. Yeah. Oh. And a crispy, dirty long leg. That's disgusting. And this is your view out here. No, I didn't notice the view because of the carpet. My God, what a stunning location. It's paradise. It truly is. Yeah, I'll say. I mean, this place is stunning. Shame it's so filthy, Richard. So the bedroom's up here, right? Right. What in the hell has happened to this carpet? I haven't been up oh, there in a while. There's more stains on this carpet than inside Hugh Hefner's fucking wife rooms. Oh, yeah, I told you, they party in here. No, but Every, how? I mean, how many can... Look at this carpet. Every room's got those stains on them, you know? And what about the cover on the bed? When was that from? 1970? You have talked to Joanna about that. Joanna, that's your wife? Ex-wife. Ex oh, damn. Yeah. Damn. Yeah. She right. wants to be a business. Which she should be. Uh, it's not a business to me. Don't ask me finances, because I would be lying if I told you I knew anything. I don't. Let's catch up later. I'm going to unpack yeah. my bags. OK, okay. cool. Uh, thanks for the update. This place is disgusting. Wow. And it's hardly surprising seeing that the owner doesn't see it as a business. I need some fresh air. Fun. He clearly doesn't care about paying guests. Kids, don't do drugs. You'll end up like that. Fucking useless. I've just arrived at Oregon's Applegate River Lodge. Hello? The hotel lobby has no furniture. It is so bare in here. The rooms are disgusting. It's like a basil. And I've discovered one of the owners is a carefree hippie. This is not a business to me. Richard says his ex-wife is the businesswoman here. I hope she has a better head on her shoulders. Hello. Joanna. Joanna, Gordon, nice to see you. Nice to meet you. So you're Joanna, who was married to Richard. Yes. Uh, you deserve a medal. <laughs> um, and what do you do? Well, let's see. I check people in. I do the banking. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm the only one in the family that's ever, you know, taken care of the books and made sure that the mortgage payment was paid. And... Why is it all on your shoulders? You just sound like the only one who's actually in control I of this. I am the only one. D I does Richard have a... been No, he's never even looked at the checkbook. I'm really tired. I'm getting tired of holding everything up, and it's getting old. Driving through here, those vineyards, the mountains, I mean, yeah. you must be making a fortune. Uh, well, you know, I'm... Well, I owe 990000 on this, and we lose from five to $15,000 a month. This is crazy. Yeah. But how can the business not be in profit? Uh, that's my... I, I don't I, know. That, I, I don't understand. No, it, that's, that's what I need you for, I honestly. Having seen the lobby and my bedroom, yeah. 
I can see why the hotel might be struggling, but surely the restaurant must be making money. With that view on the river like that? Well, the restaurant is run by Dusty, my younger son. Okay. And then Duke and his wife run the music end of the business. Okay. What percentage of the profits do you get? None. Bloody hell. It sounds nuts. I know it sounds nuts. I'm just crazy. Wow. I mean, look at this place. It's like a missed opportunity beyond belief. I mean, I... That's what everybody tells me. Everybody says, you've got a gold mine here. And I go, well, so far I haven't found the gold. <laughs> this place is a patch of heaven. So I'm shocked to hear it's not making money. I can't wait to hear why Joanna's sons aren't contributing to the lodge's finances. Nice to see you. First name is? Thank you. Melissa. Melissa, Gordon. Yeah. Nice to see you too. Well, hello. Pleasure. How are you? Likewise, my pleasure. Good yeah, to see you. Duke, right? Duke, yeah. So this is set up for the concert? Yeah. I run the sound. OK, mixing. Yeah. yeah. OK, great. Yeah. And how much is it to get in? It's 15 15 dollars. 15 dollars, yeah. So out of that 15 dollars charge, how much goes to mum? None. None. Well. Wow. Let's, uh, let's... let's have a quick word outside. The place has got a million dollars debt. Yeah, I know, and it's and and, and I've been sitting waiting, and I, I can I can relate. I think I know what's going on here. When was the last time you had a smoke? Way earlier this after the twenty minutes ago. No, no, no. This morning. This morning. Yeah. But, definitely relieves stress. But it definitely. Right. Smells of a business that's run by stoners. <laughs> yeah, I know. Duke isn't taking any responsibility for the lodge. <laughs> Hopefully, his brother will have a better excuse for not sharing any profits with his mum. Gordon wants to meet you. Hello. Hello. Dusty. David. Dusty. Uh, lucky Dusty, by the sounds of things. Oh, yes, of course. Uh, I would say. Hello. Hi, Camelia. Uh, Camelia, nice. Uh, to the Hi. chef, right? Yes. OK, great. I'm a very hard worker. I think Gordon's going to like me. Uh, so, are you making money here? Yes, sir. How much money did you make a month? Uh, last month I made about 12,000. Wow. So you make about 150 grand a year? Uh, with everything working right, yeah. And you don't pay a dollar profit to your mother? Profit, excuse me? The business is a million dollars in debt. You make a shitload of money, and your mum gets nothing. I was shocked that Dusty makes that much, and that bothers me because he should help me out financially. Known full well that you stand to inherit this business, there's still not a penny that goes in to reducing debt. And this is your mother. Correct. I really devoted my life to this place, and to be treated like I don't care about my family and don't care about this business, it really cut to the core. And I have no problem telling him to get the fuck out of here. I'd give you a kick with the ass if that was my son. I don't understand why the boys are just in it for themselves. Why can't the business work as one and everybody pull together? Well, you haven't done a damn thing around here. I work hard here, and I don't see you do a fucking thing. Because you can't take any criticism without wanting to punch my fucking lights out. Incredible. Guys, How do you feel about this? Shut the fuck up, both of it's you. It's him. He hates me. Listen. listen what would you like me to do? What would I want to see happy? you grow up and turn into a real man. I want to see you... Oh, like have, you're a fucking real I wanna man. I want to see you be able to go and what, call... What what guys, 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 guys. Oh, my God. No wonder this place is on its knees. Fuck you. I'm at Oregon's Applegate Lodge, and I thought the answer for saving this place was for everyone to work together. You can't take any criticism without wanting to punch my fucking lights out. But the boys can't even talk to each other. Yeah. This guy tells me he Listen won't even to be me. my fucking brother. Unless I it's clearly not just the lodge that's falling apart. Fuck you. My God. People have heard about my visit, and both the hotel and restaurant are booked for the night. And right this way, guys. I feel sorry for all of them. Hi there. Come on over here. I'll check you in. How are you folks doing tonight? And I'm sorry about the furniture in the lobby. They haven't got any. Please take a seat on the stairs. The guests don't look impressed with the hotel, and neither do the customers in the restaurant. But at least they've got furniture to sit on. Bruschetta here, guys. Oh, shit. That's right. Bruschetta here for you guys. Oh, man. OK, fire up. You got your tri-tip. I'm not looking forward to going to the dinner service with Gordon. Um, the interaction I had with him beforehand, I just know it's going to be a nightmare. Are we OK with that? The soup was pretty cold and didn't have any salt. And then it's, it's, no, it's lumpy. just water and potatoes. My apologies. Potatoes here. That is firing off, guys. And we got cream horseradish coming around, guys. The uh, dog at the table, is that normal, huh? 
The dog, does he sit there like that in front of customers? Yes, sir. Some request him to stay. Some call him over. Yes. Some customers call the dog over? Oh, yes, of course. The food's that bad. While I'm trying to figure out what's wrong in the restaurant, guests in the hotel are enjoying the unique charm of the Applegate Lodge. With the goober of some kind here. <laughs> you know, look at this. You got your dry cleaner hangers. I just don't know about the bear, though. I mean, that's kind of... Oh, my gosh. Where's the TV? I hope the restaurant's better than the rooms. <laughs> Kim, I need that Thousand Island that goes with this one here. Um, we got ketchup. OK, we're adding ketchup to a ranch, and that'll be a, a thousand right here. Okay. Okay. What was, was that ketchup in the salad? Yeah. What for? For the Thousand Island. Fucking hell. I can't believe this restaurant is making money. The guests must be coming for the view, because the food is dreadful. This is grilled salmon with pepper, but it tastes like you literally just sprinkled it with sugar. The salmon is frozen. I'll, I'll be more than happy to, I'll just take that off your dinner. Is it? Certainly. I can't stand to watch another minute of this. Thank goodness dinner service is almost over, because this place is a joke. Oh, dear. Got two minutes. I'm embarrassed. I'm amazed you're still open. There's no fucking standards in here. I don't believe that there's no standards. You've got a river running outside your patio with salmon in it, and you're serving frozen salmon. Where's the standard, then? What we do here is not shit. You may be able to manipulate your mother, but you are not going to pull the wool over my eyes. Because you're playing at running a restaurant that's been given to you. You haven't actually worked for this, have you? You grew up here, so, hey, Mum, I want to be a restaurateur this week. Without your mother in this lodge, you're fucked. It's nearly 10 o'clock, when many hotel guests will be thinking of heading to bed. But the music concert is just about to start. We've been doing this for 20 years, we've been playing music. I think Gordon's gonna like it. do drugs, so I never thought I'd see a dancing mushroom, but I was wrong. I recognize the smell. It's like the summer of love. These people are weird, but they sure are friendly. Nice to see you, Dina. I love you too. Is this a dream? Is this really happening? Sorry, are you checking in? I'm so sorry. Welcome to the fucking madhouse. Your room is uh, up these log stairs right behind you here. It's insane how guests are trying to check in over this racket. If I had arrived to this, I would have gotten on the first plane back home. I don't think I'll be able to relax here. I can't really escape the sound. Wow. And the longer the music goes on, the more guests complain. I can't hear anything. You guys want to come back here? You know what? It's on me tonight, OK? We're going to make you happy no matter what. OK? All right. With Joanna giving away okay. rooms for free, the lodge is losing money, pushing this hotel further into debt. And thank you guys so much for being a part of this. How about it one more time for Polyrhythmics? It's way past midnight. And with the band finally wrapping up, it's time for me to get some sleep. Before I dive under those covers, I'm dying to see what's on top of them. That is disgusting. I am not putting my head on that pillow. Ah, oh, I just touched that. It's like a mosaic of semen. Look at that. Oh, disgusting. Oh, look at the lampshade. Look at that. How can they charge money for people to sleep in this filth? Wow. This is definitely a night for my sleeping bag. Right, lights out. Oh, come on. It's like trying to sleep above a nightclub. Follow him, follow him, he's going. Oh, shit. Holy fuck. I'm going to jump out the window. This is crazy. 
Oh, for God's sake. It's my first night at Oregon's Applegate Lodge, and there's no way I can sleep over this dreadful noise. I've had enough. Hey, Gordon. I'll be damned. Yeah, no, I'm trying to get the sleep over there. You got two seconds? Yeah. Joe, thank you. This is insane. Oh, my God. Thank you. Not... Um, how on earth is anyone supposed to sleep with that racket? <laughs> can, can you get the family together? Yeah? Yeah. And can we just have a... A meeting together. Holy shit. I don't know what to say. I'm, I'm, I'm struggling. I've never seen anything quite as shoddy as I've experienced today, and I, I, I'm, I'm wondering why this place is still open. How much money did we make tonight? How much money did you make? About 1,500 bucks. 1,500. How much money did you make tonight? Uh, a couple hundred. A couple of hundred. About 500. But with all the noise complaints, Joanna had to comp three rooms. Isn't that right? Absolutely. You two make a profit, but your mother loses money. It does not make sense. Nobody says we were sensible people. Oh, we're just blessed people. Having a million dollars in debt is not blessed. First of all, you don't understand what you're talking about. You're talking business. Mm -hmm. You're a businessman. Where's, where's the business? I'm, I'm not a businessman, and I'm not trying to teach you people to be business people. It's, this is our home. No one knows the difference between a hotel and a home. And does anyone else know how much stress and pressure you're under? Um, you know, I do what I have to do to, to keep the doors open, you know? Can we just quit talking about money? Richard, why can't it be financially secure so that both we of the kids... We are financially no, secure. No, Richard, we are not. You can laugh at this and laugh at that, and we just want to make everybody happy, man. Listen, it ain't an issue with me. You're refusing to look at the issue because you and your sons are taking advantage of Joanna. No, it's not an issue. So why are you talking so I'm, much bullshit? It's not bullshit. It's yes, straight it up. It's straight Everything out. you say to me, I'm just ignore. I'm going to knock him on his ass. But you, you think, think I else? care what you think about me? Richard. Why don't you go have your yeah. cigarette? I'll go have my cigarette, yeah. relax a little bit, yeah. and we'll come back and then discuss this. Yeah. <clears throat> I'm not going to argue with your father. I'm just going to call it as I see it. This lodge needs to be run by a business. And when I listen to your mum stressing out about payments, and you two going off, running your own little businesses, because you two are button heads. It's a fucking disgrace. This shit has to stop. Because right now, this lady's suffering. Yet your heads are so far in the fucking sand that no one can actually see the damage you're causing. My worst nightmare is that Duke and Dusty never can get on the right page and and I'm stuck till I'm 90 years old trying to run this place, and then I die, and it's gone. I'm not a miracle worker. If you want this place to survive, you need to come together as a family and run this place as a proper family business. It is way past everybody's bedtime. I'll see you in the morning. Good night. <sighs> this place is insane. I mean... I've never seen such a badly run lodge in all my life, and the one person I feel sorry for is Joanna. Everybody else, they think it's a big joke. Well, I tell you what, I'm not fucking laughing. Oh, God. With all the partying going on at this lodge, I hardly got a wink of sleep. I don't want to stand on that carpet. This lodge is in a dreadful state, and I think everyone's blind to it. That has to change. Come on in. You okay, my darling? Yeah. Uh, there's something I want you to understand, because I think you're the only one who can actually appreciate yep. some things uh, that's been going on here. Yeah? Yeah. Will you come up with me? What he might be showing me next, uh, I don't know how much <laughs> worse it could get. Hello, everybody. Uh, thank you so much for coming. This is Joanna. She is the owner. Um, these are esteemed guests that have been staying in your lodge. I need to hear the truth, and so does Joanna. Let's start off with you, madam, please. 
Um, me and my boyfriend stayed here a few days ago. Both of us weren't really pleased. We were all the way in the Myrtle Suite, so we were the closest to the bar, and we could hear it like we were next to it. Uh, my apologies. Uh, I'm sorry. Please, madam, sir. We got the honeymoon suite, and the bathroom wasn't clean, so we, you know, I cleaned it, and it just kind of grossed us out. The fact you had to clean the room before you tried to relax, it's insane. <sighs> madam, please. We got into bed and felt something. I pulled it up with my foot, and it was a pair of underwear, dirty underwear. Oh, my God. As she... I am mortified. That is completely unacceptable. Did you have any interactions with Richard? Richard invited us to the back room. What, in the, like, the butt hut? Yes. To do what? There was Can't marijuana in the back. He offered, which we did not partake. Taking guests into the butt room and offering them marijuana. It's not a hippie commune. It's a, it's a lodge. I know. I thank you for your time. The guest feedback has hit Joanna hard. And now she's asked to speak to me alone. Come on in. You okay, my darling? Oh, I wanted to show you this book. It's the building of the lodge and kind of see what we went through. Oh, wow. Today. From the beginning? From the beginning, yeah. Wow. We built it with our hands. We felled the trees, we hand peeled the poles, we, we did it all. And it's, it's an amazing story how we pulled this together. I think if you understand the struggle that we went through to get it to this place, you understand why I'm so fired up about yeah. keeping it and and having it run wow. top notch. And this is this is sort of ground zero, this is where yep, it all started. Ground zero, yeah. That's that's the butt hood, actually. Seriously. Yeah. That's incredible. And the kids, you know, they were all here. We grew up here. They're 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 attached to it. It means so much to them. Now I understand. I mean it's clearly your your little paradise, but I don't think it's been paradise for guests. But that's all gonna change. Yep. Wow. Look at that. <laughs> and they lived happily ever after. That was my dream. And I think that could still happen. It is going to happen. Please. Uh, Let's go and do this. Okay. okay. You bet. I'll see you shortly. Okay. Thank you for that. Sure. Now I can see why Joanna loves this lodge so much. And I know that to save this place, I need to get her sons talking again. Clearly their dad's not going to make that happen. <laughs> He's too busy doing nothing. Come in a minute. So I've got to find a way to get these brothers on the same page. So, can you guys get this thing settled once and for all? I can't talk to him, though, and have him not want to punch me, OK? I've been being bullied my whole life, Gordon. What are you talking about? You, you, you really think that you haven't done anything No, no, to him? What, what have I Tell me. Tell me what I've done. Tell me what and I've I... said to you that hurts you so bad, because you've said so many things to me. You've resented me. You've told me I'm a punk. You said I'm a white trash tweaker. You're living like one. I'm ashamed that you're my brother. That's a serious statement. Shit. Come on. This is horrifying. You know, go ahead. Just leave. No. Get the fuck off this property. Did you guys get along ever? Was there ever a time? Shit. Come on. This is horrifying. You know, go ahead. Just leave. No. Did you guys get along ever? Get the fuck off this Was property. Was there ever a time? When is somebody going to say, fuck it, this isn't about my big brother, my little brother, this is about my mum? Right. The hatred has to stop. I agree. The hatred has to stop. Yeah. If we don't figure this out, we're going to lose the lodge. I don't want that at all. I, Dusty. Why have we let this go on for so long? And I love you, and I, and I don't want to see you hurt ever. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. It's been such a long road with Duke that, you know, I've just been, been praying every day for something to change because it, it taxes my mother so much. I am so relieved to hear that from both of you. You OK? Yeah. Now that Duke and Dusty have seen the pain they've caused their mother, I believe they're going to be willing to put their issues aside to save this piece of paradise. This lodge has so much potential in this beautiful setting. It's somewhere I'd love to bring my wife and four kids for a vacation. It would be a tragedy if Joanna and her family lost it. <sighs> what an absolutely beautiful place to go for a swim. But there's still one problem I need to tackle. 
to make sure this lodge has a future it deserves. It's time to talk business. Take a seat. Um, Richard, there's a business meeting. OK. You're not really involved running the business. Right. right. OK? And I think you need to let these guys deal with the business. Yeah. So I would ask you to disappear. Okay. You're a nice guy. Yeah. You're not going to change. And do you know what? I don't think your family want you to change. I know. They love you yeah. as you are. Yes. OK, so I want you to have a, a relaxed afternoon. Cool. Thank you. That's why you're here. Well, I appreciate I've it. I've been talking years. You take care. <laughs> OK. Uh, OK, see you, Dad. Thank you, yeah. Richard. Right now, it's not your time, young man, and it's not your time. Do you know whose time it is? That's right. That's right. And she's at the helm. But she can't do it without you. That's right. All the personal shit, you leave when you walk through that door, because it's about business now. Yeah, we've never had that. You have the possibility of turning this around. Joanna, what have you got to say? I just really need you guys both. You know, I tried for many years to do this on my own. But you know what? It's time maybe you guys help out a little more. Let's get this thing going, man. Let's roll. You realize how freaking lucky we are to have this place. Boys, are both of you committed to working together and getting this place turned around? Yeah. I'm in it if you're in it. Absolutely, man. As, as businessmen and then brothers. Yep. We figure this out. We'll work the other shit out. But we gotta be here for mom, okay? <laughs> okay. All right. Love you. Big time. It just warms my heart to watch the boys embrace and, and to, to see that they really want to, to work together and to help grow this place again. <laughs> It feels like a weight's been lifted off my shoulders right now, and, and now that we're actually on some sort of a, a page together, I think we can we can really start going somewhere with it. I am just like stoked. <laughs> These are tears of joy, not sorrow. Thank God. There's a lot more changes coming tomorrow. Thank you, Joanna. Thank you. I thought Gordon was coming here to fix the, the lodge, but he ended up fixing our family, which is amazing. Thank you. Thank you. I'll see you later. OK. Coming up, welcome to the new Applegate River Lodge. I can't believe it. <laughs> welcome to the new Applegate River Lodge. From this day forward, we will run this as one business. Yes, there's a restaurant. Yes, it's a music venue. But they are all part of the lodge business and they contribute to the overall lodge finances. Understood? Understood. Good. I cannot wait for you to see through those doors. You ready? Yeah. Absolutely. Let's go. Whoa. Oh, my god. Oh, my gosh. Wow. Oh, god. oh nice. <laughs> wow. Holy smokes. Wow. Woo. This looks like a lodge. Wow. <laughs> oh, my god. <laughs> When I first got here, I had to sit on the floor. Oh, so now your guests will feel warm and very welcome. Yes, absolutely. Wow. The lobby actually feels like a lobby now. The leather couch is incredible and the rocking chairs. I mean, people can come down in the morning, have a cup of coffee, they can sit down. It's amazing. Is it gorgeous? It's beautiful, yeah. I love it. Come over to the reception desk. There's something else I want to show you. Here is the magic. Oh, yeah. I have yeah. given you a stunning brand new hotel management POS, point oh, of sale yeah. system. Wow. So now your guests can check in online. Wow. It works in here, it works in the restaurants, and it's going to tap in to your music as well. Perfect. I love it. That system is going to really change everything we do here. Gordon has just, he's synced everything up and made this one business. It's really what this place has needed for so long. Now, would you like to see my room? Yes. Absolutely. Yeah. Let's go. There we go. Go straight through. Oh. Oh, cute. Look at this. Wonderful. Oh, it's gorgeous. Oh, nice. Wow. Oh, it smells so good in here, too. I love wow. it. Wow. So the room is fresh. It's vibrant. It's warm. And I've had all the carpets cleaned, so there are no more stains. Ooh. Nice. I love oh. My curtains are gone. My 16-year-old oh. curtains. <laughs> oh, it's nice. Is it beautiful? Wow. Way nice. The disgusting bedware, all gone. And with the blinds, guests 
no longer need to stare down a Richard's butthole. 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 The Calvin room looks like a really classy place now. I mean, the bed, the, the furnishings, the lamps, it's, it's not all that funky stuff I had in there for years. <laughs> oh, I love it. Stunning. One last thing I'd like to show you at the restaurant. Are you ready? Yep. yep. Let's go. We've got some exciting things happening there. Oh, my. Welcome to the new Applegate River Lodge menu. The menu's small, the menu's dynamic, and the better the ingredients, the less that needs doing to them. Let's start off with the top, shall we? Half a roasted chicken and a lovely sage lemon butter sauce. Next to that, the wild king salmon with citronelle and grilled lemon. And then finally, 12 ounce New York strip. Stunning. I like it. It's simple, but it's, it's yep. perfect. Now, sit down and enjoy. Oh, my God. It's steak. Oh, yum. You can just taste the freshness. It's really good. It's a night and day. I love this menu because it's us. Have we ever had dinner all together? It really hasn't happened. Yeah. <laughs> Coming up, Richard, you will not believe what I've done with your butt hut. Oh, oh my shit. God. With the Davis family ready to work together, and the stunning new changes to the lodge, I've got one more surprise for the family that will take this hotel to a whole new level. This one you're gonna love. <laughs> oh, that's so cool. <laughs> wow. Now, this is everything you need to put on a mini music festival for your guests. Oh, wonderful. Oh, I can't believe it. <laughs> now, here's the exciting news. All of a sudden, the lodge has four extra bedrooms. No way. Oh, no. Oh, my God. Whoa. Oh, wow. Yeah, that's too good. Wow. Mm -hmm. Coupled with a new outdoor grill so the guests can enjoy a phenomenal barbecue lunch while they enjoy the show. Now, the music business, the lodge, the restaurant will work together. And all the elements of the business will be making money to help pay down the debt and keep this place open for decades to come. I'm completely excited and ready to start doing music outdoors. And I think it's really going to be a great way for the lodge and the restaurant and the music to unite. Wow. Perfect. Now, Richard, you will not believe what I've done with your butt hut. You ready? Oh, Come and see. God. Come and see. <laughs> Only joking. I haven't touched that thing about. <laughs> I was. You don't want to go in there. <laughs> It's time for the new and improved Applegate Lodge to open to the public. Full course later, yes. While Dusty and Cammy deal with the meals, Duke and Melissa handle the entertainment. With their combined effort, much needed revenue is coming into the lodge. And with the music on the outdoor stage, the entertainment is far enough away for guests to enjoy their rooms. Quiet. Feels like we're away from everything. Now that the relaunch is a success, I've got to hit the road. Gordon. It's time to say goodbye. It's been a slice of heaven. A little slice of heaven. <laughs> <laughs> Serious? Yeah. But please do not offer any more guests some of those special herbs. Already. You built this place. Right. Now let them have it. Or oh, gladly. Okay. <laughs> Take care. Okay. It's been an absolute pleasure. Bye-bye. Okay, right. Boys, my time is done. Look after each other okay. and forget the past. Work with your brother and take some weight off your mother's shoulders. Yeah? yeah. And this place is going to roll. Thank you so okay. much, Gordon. If Gordon didn't come, we'd, we'd be in the same stagnant environment with uh, no love and a lot of anger. Those boys need to know who's boss. They will. Uh, good luck. Thank you so okay. much. Okay. There's just no words that can express how grateful I feel for this awesome, amazing experience. Good night, darling. Bye-bye. I'll be sad to leave this place. But I will not be sorry to see the back of Richard's butthole. But hot, but hot. <laughs> Since my visit to the Applegate River Lodge, Dusty and Duke continue to get along. And they're helping Joanna get income for the lodge to reduce their debt. If you want to get all the trash, I'll get all the dishes. Uh, okay. This family run hotel is finally running smoothly. I feel like this is the first step to taking the lodge into a destination resort, which is what it needs to be. We should spend more time together as a family, you know? Yeah. Gordon has given us a, an opportunity of a lifetime, and we're not going to let him down. I want to thank Gordon for having the love in his heart to come here and put my family back together. That's what I want.
Está bien. Thank you.